Though its work is specifically targeted to military needs, the benefits of Walter Reed Army Institute of Research reach far beyond armed forces. Walter Reed has been extremely successful in testing and developing anti-malaria drugs. These drugs have provided treatment alternatives for drug-resistant strains. By conservative estimates, malaria claims more than a million lives globally each year. 90% of them in sub-Saharan Africa and the vast majority are children. But whether in a Maryland lab or in Africa, the transmission of the parasite is a perfect cycle in which mosquitoes infect a human who infects the next mosquito and so on, the cycle never ending. Technological breakthroughs have led to vaccine discovery and development. Dr. Evelina Ingov, a microbiologist and one of the researchers here at the Walter Reed, has been at the center of this research on Morelia vaccines. To give you a brief overview, uh, the beginning of the process actually includes um, taking a piece of DNA and putting it into a bacteria. We actually use bacteria as factories to produce the protein. And we can then, once the bacteria has the DNA inside of it, we grow the bacteria in these containers. This is a fermentation unit. And we can grow large amounts of bacteria that are making the protein inside of the cell. And this is a very efficient process for making vaccines. Once the bacteria has made the protein inside of the cell, then the next step is to actually crack the cells to get the protein out of the bacteria. And this is a microfluidizer here, which cracks the cells uh, and releases all the proteins into the liquid. Uh, specifically is a merozoite surface protein vaccine, which has actually been tested in a uh, pediatric population in Kenya. And the results from that trial will actually be published later this year. And this is a chromatography system. And there is a resin bead here, which binds to the protein very specifically. And all of the debris and other materials that we're not interested come through the system and are thrown away. And the protein, that's the vaccine, stays bound to the resin. And then later, we can take the protein off of the resin and this is part of the process for purifying the protein that will be used as a vaccine. After we purify the protein, we analyze them on these gels. And I'm gonna show you an example of a pure protein. This blue band here is one of the vaccine candidates. So you can see that from thousands of other proteins that would be present, we actually purify to one single band. And um, this tells us that the protein is pure and mm. we should proceed to the next steps, which would be to test them in the animal models. Can you maybe explain what these colors mean? That's right. The colored bands on the left are actually protein standards. They're used to tell us what the, the size of the purified protein are. So these would be proteins that we know the molecular weight and from that, we can tell what the size of our protein is. Conducting research on the vaccine is a process that involves several components, like mosquitoes, top-notch scientists, ordinary people willing to participate in malaria trials, and good research facilities. The vaccine inventor, Dr. David Lena, is an army researcher who has worked for years with others at the Walter Reed to make the vaccine ready for clinical trials. We're working on the very end of a malaria vaccine that we've developed over the last four or five years, and you've come at a very good time because right now we're at the stage in this vaccine development where we're going to be analyzing the immune response of about a dozen people which you've given this vaccine to and we've challenged them with malaria. So in the next week or so, we're going to see if they're protected. So right now, we're getting ready to actually look at their immune response. When you talk about malaria, my body starts to shake because I've suffered from malaria before. So uh, maybe help us, take us through like the process. What is it that you do to come up with uh, this vaccine? Okay, well, we came up with the idea for the vaccine about five years ago when we were looking through the literature and we discovered that people had identified a protein on the surface of the parasite itself that was involved in getting the parasite from one red blood cell to another red blood cell. And we figured if we can get the body to attack that particular protein and block it, that it would prevent the parasite from finding another red blood cell to go into 
and help the body destroy it. This uh, research institution has been involved in uh, like uh, a lot of test trials. Uh, are there some that you can point to and say maybe these uh, vaccines have worked or are there some situations whereby you've encountered maybe let's say like uh, uh, people, let's say bodies that are resistant to the vaccine that uh, uh, you've uh, uh, manufactured here? Well, we actually have um, worked and helped develop the only malaria vaccine that seems to be successful today, and that's called RTSS, in collaboration with GlaxoSmithKline, GSK in Belgium, and uh, the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. Uh, for the last 20 years, we've been working on that vaccine. We developed it here at Walter Reed. Okay? So that is a very great success. It's been in trials in Mozambique and Ghana, and now is in further trials in Kenya and other places in Africa. How do you select these people, or how do you come up with a drug that is kind of uh, universally accepted by like all the other people? Because what I might suffer from out here in America is not what somebody in Africa might suffer from. Well, it might be malaria, but of a different type. So how do you overcome that kind of... Well, that's a good question. Yeah. Actually, the first thing that we're concerned with with any vaccine development is whether or not it's safe to give to people. People here and people in Africa are going to react pretty much the same to the vaccine on a safety level. Okay? Whether or not their immunity to the vaccine is going to be the same, the immune response to the vaccine is going to be the same, and how effective it is is something that we will is challenge, uh, the, something that we will look at a little bit later in the development. This is Dr. Stephen Kaba from Ghana. Dr. Kaba is looking at the immune response of some individuals to our vaccine. One of the things that we want to understand is do they make what we call antibodies? And the antibodies, the amount of antibodies can be determined on a test called an ELISA. So Dr. Kaba, do you want to explain what you're looking at here? Um, what we're doing here is, uh, what you are seeing here is, um, first we have the antigen, we put it on this plate, and then we, we immunize the mice with the same antigen, some mice or human beings, but you take the blood and then you process the serum, then you can put the serum on the plate. First we have the antigen itself on the plate, and then you add the serum to it, and then we have some chemicals after that. These chemicals react to uh, another antibody, which is a secondary antibody. So your first antibody is the one from the, the, the immunized mice. Then you put on the secondary antibody, which has a conjugate, which is recognized by these uh, chemicals. That's an enzyme. And then when you put it on, if the mice were able to produce antibodies against the antigen or the vaccine, then you have a color developing over here. So the, the colors that you are seeing, so you see that these are different uh, dilutions. So you dilute them to see how strong or how much antibodies have been produced. So you have a pretty good response here. Pretty good response here. So mm -hmm. you see that some mice produce a little bit of it, others produce more. And then as you go down, you see that the color fades out. That tells you the strength of, so you can use a, a computer to calculate the amount of antibody that has been produced. What you're looking at here are actual stained microscope slides of blood that is infected with malaria. What we have here is we've taken blood from test animals or humans that we have vaccinated and then challenged with malaria. And in order to determine whether or not they're protected, we take a drop of their blood, put it on a glass slide, and stain it with a chemical that stains the parasites. We then take that and put it under a microscope and we can actually see the parasites. Lieutenant Colonel Jack Williams, chief of the Malaria Transmission Lab, oversees a room known as the Insectrail, where thousands of mosquitoes are bled in large pans of water and where the temperature is carefully controlled. To reach the special mosquitoes, we must walk through seven heavy doors. This is where we keep all of our infected mosquitoes. We prepared these mosquitoes for the malaria trial that we conducted earlier this week. Each of these cartons contains, oh, roughly 200 mosquitoes, and probably 90% or better of them are infected with malaria. They don't fly much in their confined space, 
The high heat and humidity are meant to mimic the environments in which the mosquitoes thrive. Results from a trial of the vaccine RTS, which was tested on more than 2,000 children in some parts of Africa after the army helped to develop it with GlaxoSmithKline, has generated cautious optimism that a vaccine with reasonable rights of protection against infection and disease is closed. That is the reason for everyone involved to believe that the vaccine will be ready for mass pediatric use by 2011 after the last stages of the trial are complete. The Walter Reed Army Institute of Research has been working on this malaria vaccine for quite some time now. If it, this drug is approved by FDA, it will go a long way in saving lives of people in Africa and other parts of the world that suffer from malaria.